Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for September 12th, 2019. Wow. Where do we start? First off, the equity market is just a little bit off. It's all-time high, at least in the S&P futures, at about 30.30 in the index. On the actual cash index, we have that level pegged at, we'll zoom in just quickly, almost 30.30 again, and today's high was roughly 30.20. So we have this bullish upward rally, a short squeeze, we're calling it alternate thesis, which has taken us all the way just about to the all-time high. We'll compare that with the Dow mini futures. We can see the gap and go, the breakout side of Don's volatility box, or the rectangle or the sideways trading range that took place through most of August. So now we have the market, at least the Dow, 27.5, 27.6 will be its focal point. And the NASDAQ, that's that 8,000 print. We were talking about that in chat a lot. The NASDAQ into 8,000. So it's all-time high is about 80.50. The Russell still lags behind because it's all-time high, the high on the chart goes back to 2018. Meaning that if you compare the S&P, which made its high over here in July, and the Russell, which made its high in late 2018, the Russell still is the weakest of the indices, but given that it's in a wide trading range, caught a strong bid. In fact, it's been the strongest market for most of this week, or at least each day of most of this week. And that's taken the Russell from 1,500 all the way just shy of about 1,600. We can update our short-term pivot, and then takes us into about 1,580. So the Russell is into critical zones. The key thing about this session today and the rest of the week, really Friday and the next week, is this expected move. So Don walked us through that this morning, discussing the S&P could move up and could test this upper range. And it did, but not just tested it, but traded at least for Thursday session's close down away from it. So this is going to frame the game for Friday. And of course, we'll have our weekly end of week video that Don will do and will be prepared for next week. But we'll frame it in terms of the will it or won't it. Will the market go ahead and touch the all-time high or go beyond it? and keep this bull trend going? Or do we have at least a Friday pullback? That's how we'll frame today. Beyond the equity market, we had some interesting headlines, and those headlines were mainly the ECB, which is they're gonna cut interest rates and they're gonna start their quantitative easing or their bond buying program in November. And from the history of the United States experiment with quantitative easing one, QE1, QE2 and QE3, those corresponded almost directly with a straight up equity market. So we can think of quantitative easing as a bullish influence on equity prices or the broader risk on trade. So let's talk about gold, look at its daily chart and then discuss where it is headed. As we look at gold, we see it is into this 1500 per ounce pivot. We discussed this as a pullback plan the gold had good odds to come away from 1550 down toward 1500 and now potentially up away from it. That green bar does not tell the whole story because we got that big move up, at least 30 points move to the upside overnight. So today's session pretty much was a wash. Took gold all the way from 1530s overnight bounce. We're right back into our 1500 per share pivot, which just locks in how important this level is. So we're threatening one of these bounce pullback plays or uptrend continuity plays that we saw in June and July. It took a little time, it was a little volatile, but the same logic we can talk about at 1400. Get a little bit under it, bounce above, a little bit under it, bounce above, and eventually break to the upside. So that's what we'll be watching in gold or in the corresponding, if you don't trade futures, GLD. And that pivot for GLD or ETF traders is about 140 per share. On the other hand, we have crude oil doing its own thing. We think of crude as a risk on market with the equity market. And despite going to just about all time highs, well, crude oil looks a little bit like the Russell, that its peak was in late 2018. And from there, it's just been struggling to get off the mat. And that mat being about 50 per barrel. We had this target today for about 55 per, per barrel, and that's where we're gonna be 
into Friday session and into next week. So roughly speaking, 54, 54, 50, that is a longer term pivot play. And it is the midpoint of this current trading range. That's roughly 58 on the index and then 50 for the downside. So we're gonna see crude within this trading range in the context of the S&P that continues the risk on behavior. So the bigger picture, we can look at individual ETFs or sectors and the like. Financials were strong. The strongest today was actually materials. And of course we can go into individual stocks themselves. But before we go on, we'll take a look at the broader picture of the S&P, which is on the weekly chart, keeping this bull market intact. And late 2018 was a rough one, but it did hold support, V spike reversal off of, can you believe it, 2400. And we are now at 3000, actually above 3000. So this series of higher highs, higher lows, and all the other components of the uptrend still are in play. And if in the future, maybe not Friday, but next weekend beyond September, especially with the Fed potential rate cut announcement next week, we'll see what they say and what they do. Well, we could see a scenario where the market does extend, maybe not majorly, but still does extend a little bit beyond those prior highs. And we can look at prior examples, such as the end of 20, in this case was 18, so last year, the market made a new high. We're, we're essentially flirting with these same levels. If you think of this as early 2018, the pullback mid 2018, and the will we, won't we, or will we or will we not make new highs. And eventually, after some little pullbacks and some back and forth, we were at the same level and then above it. And that led to a few weeks to the upside and then a pretty dramatic pullback. So we're certainly in the caution zone there. And the next time we exceeded new all-time highs, we were getting lots of news up here, was in 2019. And that was 29.50. So that's the prior high. Prior high came away from it in the middle of the year, but then exceeded it for the next three or four weeks and then turned around. And here we're having the same conversation. So that is the bigger picture of the broader context in which we're discussing. And of course, planning out our trades. But as we go into Friday, Note that we are into 3020, the edge of the weekly expected move, and we could see a decent pullback. But in each of these times, except for one, the market would go ahead and make new highs. So we'll watch all of this in context, discuss it in terms of our, what we call risk on, which is over here, and risk off, which is gold and bonds. Even if you don't trade those markets, just keep those in at least the corner of your trading screens. Because if bonds start to break under this level, which they already have, 130, that could be bullish for equities. And if gold breaks under 1500, that could be bullish for equities. But still, we are into resistance pivots. Gold is into support. Bonds are a little bit weaker. And then crude is into a support pivot. So there's a little bit of murkiness in this inner market. So we have to watch our markets, our trades, and plan our strategies very carefully. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with your Theo Nightly video for September 12th, 2019.